بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو انادر لیکچر آن ہیومن فیکٹرز انجینئرنگ وی ور آن ماڈیول زیرو اینڈ وی ور ڈسکسنگ سم بیسکس آف ہیومن فیکٹرز انجینئرنگ اینڈ وی ور ریویوئنگ سم سم پری ریکوزٹس اینڈ ان پری ریکوزٹس وی ور ڈسکسنگ ہیومن مسکولر اسکیلیٹل سسٹم ان دا لاسٹ سیریز آف سیگمنٹس وی ڈسکسڈ دا فنکشنز آف اسکیلیٹل سسٹم the types of bones and specifically we discuss the structure of human backbone in this segment we will discuss basic movements of joints and in the following segment we will discuss types of joints so learning objectives of this segment include to understand different joint movements uh, they are flexion extension and and hyper extension adduction and abduction rotation and circumduction then we have supination and pronation dorsiflexion and plantar flexion inversion and eversion elevation and depression so one important point you should keep in mind is is, is that most of these movements are in pair so one movement is opposite to the other in most cases like adduction abduction supination pronation even this uh, flexion and extension so most of these movements are in in pair so one movement is opposite to the other so references for this uh, segment are also the same as were for the previous segments so this book uh, the facts completed guide to the human body by the diagram group and engineering physiology basis of human factors engineering slash ergonomics by kromer et al so first pair of movements we will see is flexion and extension flexion and extension so flexion is decrease of angle between two two body parts so flexion is decreasing an angle when two bones move towards each other the action is known as flexion so for example if we talk about the about the lower leg so if it moves towards upper leg like like is shown in this figure so that is that is flexion so movement in this direction and just the opposite is extension so extension is increase in angle between two body parts so when two bones move away from each other the action is known as extension so in flexion the two body parts or two bone moves toward each other and in extension they move away from each other so in this case in the in the uh, figure below when the lower arm moves towards upper arm that is flexion and when opposite happens that is extension so you can say when the in this case specifically when a bone is in its neutral position for example when it is straight and it moves away from that neutral position in a way that the angle between Uh, the two uh, body part decreases that is flexion and when it moves back towards its uh, neutral or straight position that is extension so when leg was straight and it moved in this direction so that was flexion and when it moved back to its original position that was extension same is in this case so when arm was straight for example and moved uh, the lower uh, lower arm moved towards upper arm that was flexion and when it moved back to its uh, original or neutral position that was extension hyperextension is the Uh, sorry there was some interruption 
So I repeat uh, the last point that I mentioned that uh, hyperextension uh, is when the body part moves beyond the anatomical position. So that is hyperextension. This means that the joint angle becomes greater than 180 degrees. So for example, if your head is straight, that is its neutral position. When it moves forward, that will be flexion. Right? When it moves in this direction, that will be flexion. The so angle between head and, uh, and your trunk is decreasing. So that is flexion. So when it moves back to its neutral position, in the straight position, so that is extension. But when it moves beyond that neutral position, so extension continues beyond the neutral position, that is hyperextension. So it is not possible in all joints, but uh, you can take another example of your hand. When your hand is straight, it is making a zero degree angle with your, with your lower arm, that is its neutral position. When your hand moves toward the lower arm, so angle between your hand and lower arm decreases, that is flexion. When it is moves back to the zero degree angle, that is extension. And when you move it beyond that, so back of your hand moves toward the toward the forearm that is hyperextension. So uh, this is what I was saying. So when you move the hand in this direction, that was flexion. Back to its original or neutral position, that is zero degree angle between your hand and lower arm, that is extension. And when it moves beyond that, that is hyperextension. That the word hyper indicates that this extension is beyond the uh, natural limit. So there is a food for thought you, for, for you, a question. In which plane do flexion and extension occur? Just think over it. That in which plane? We, we discussed three types of planes. Medial plane, a frontal plane and transverse plane. So in which plane do you think flexion and extension occur? Of course, in anatomical position. So do they occur in medial plane, in frontal plane or in transverse plane? And the answer is generally the flexion and extension occur in sagittal plane or, or the medial plane. That is, uh, that is the sagittal plane or medial plane. If the subject is in anatomical position, so we discuss what anatomical position is. The next pair of movement is adduction and abduction. So AD duction and AB duction just to, to differentiate between them. So adduction and abduction. So adduction, AD, duction, is bringing together toward the midline. So when a body part moves towards the vertical center line, that is toward the medial plane of the body, it is known as adduction, AD, duction. And this movement occurs when the arm is, for example, lowered. So the arm is, for example, added, added to the body. So adduction, it comes toward the center line of the body. And AB duction is just opposite. So AB duction is moving away, away from the midline. So when a body part moves away from the vertical center line, known as AB. That's when the arm is raised in this case, just as is shown. So in the case of AD duction, the arm was moving toward the center line of the body in this direction. And AB duction is just opposite. It is moving away from the center line of the body. So Adduction bringing together toward the midline. Again, we are seeing the definition. Toward the midline, bringing together 
and abduction abduction is moving away away from the midline so when you are having your fingers closed that is of course the neutral position and when you are opening your fingers so you are moving them away from in this case center line of your hand so that is abduction and once you are bringing them back to the neutral position that is we are bringing them together so that is adduction so adduction and abduction of fingers is shown same about the leg when you are standing straight that is a neutral position and when you are moving your leg away abduction and once you are bringing it back to the original position normal standing position that is adduction a double d so you are adding or you are bringing two bars closer so in which plane do you think abduction and adduction occur in anatomical position you, you saw a few examples adduction and abduction of the of the of the arm fingers and leg as well so in anatomical position in which plane do these movements occur in your point of view so the answer is frontal plane frontal plane the plane that divides the body in in two halves front and back so adduction and abduction occur in frontal plane in anatomical position next we have rotation and circumduction so in contrast to flexion and extension and adduction and abduction this is not a pair of terms these are not just opposite movements but both are rotational movements of of your bones so rotation is the turning of a bone around its own long axis so rotation is the turning of a bone around its own long axis like the rotating axle of a wheel so for example as you can see in the figure that if you are rotating the arm about its own axis so that is for example the axis of the arm and you are just rotating it about that axis that is rotation so in which plane is this rotation occurring in in anatomical uh, position so you can also think of rotation of your head so if you say no for example so you rotate your head so rotation of the head for example or rotation of the arm in anatomic in, in anatomical position occurs in which plane medial plane frontal plane or transverse plane the answer is transverse plane the horizontal plane that we had that divides the body in two halves that is up and down so this movement in anatomical position occurs in transverse plane circumduction is also a rotational movement but it is a 360 degree rotation that outlines a circular cone it is limited to the most mobile joints and it is not about its own axis it can be about any axis actually so example could be for example when in cricket a bowler bowls so that is example of uh, of circumduction or in another example is also from cricket when in an umpire a uh, signals free hit so that is an example of circumduction as well so it is also a rotation but it is uh, it is more the angle is greater as compared to uh, rotation and ro this movement is not around the axis of the bone so for example in the figure you can see that on the right uh, our right side this is the circumduction so you are rotating the arm about some imaginary axis some axis that lies somewhere over here so that is not actually uh, the axis of the arm so that is circumduction so classical example of circumduction is 
the ro rotational movements that are possible uh, on your shoulder joint. So here is an exam another example, circumduction of your thumb, right, right now when you are uh, listening to me. So that is actually not exactly uh, a circular movement. That is not exactly a circle that is formed because of circumduction of the thumb. But there is some resistance to exactly circular movement. So maybe some cone is formed, some ellipse is formed, but that is not exactly a circle. Uh, similarly, on the on the right side, you can see the circumduction of your of your arm and circumduction of your leg. We have another pair of terms that is supination and pronation. So these two are special cases of, of rotation because a body part or, or a bone is rotating around its own axis, but this, this pair of term is specific to the, to the lower arm, to radius and ulna. So these refer to the movements of radius around ulna. So when you rotate the arm so that the palm faces down, that is pronation, and rotating the arm so that the palm faces up, that is supination. So you can remember it that supination also includes up. So when your uh, when your palm is up, you rotate your forearm in such a way that the palm is on the upper side. So that is supination. So supination also includes a UP that is up. So you can remember it in that way. And just the opposite when the palm faces down, that is pronation. So in this case, the uh, you are rotating your forearm in such a way that your palm is down. So that is pronation. And when your palm is up, in this case, figure B, that is supination. The two special forms of rotation applicable to your lower, lower arm. We have another pair of terms that is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So these are also special forms of flexion and extension and they relate to your, to your feet, to, to the ankle and foot only. So lifting the top of the foot upward, like in this case, so angle between foot and leg is decreased. So that is dorsiflexion. So actually you are moving what? The dorsal side of your foot. So dorsal means posterior side. So that is dorsiflexion. And pointing the toes and arcing the foot, increasing the angle between foot and leg, that is plantar flexion. So you are actually moving the plantar side of your foot. So angle uh, between your foot and the lower leg is, is increasing. So that is plantar flexion. So you can say that dorsiflexion is basically extension and plantar flexion is actually flexion. But these two are specific words that are used for these two movements. So in which plane is uh, this, this, this pair of movements occurring? Just think in which plane this pair of movements, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion is occurring. So in which plane? And the answer is in the same plane in which flexion and extension occurred. The flexion of, for example, your arm and leg occurred in, in the sagittal plane or medial plane. So, Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion also occur in, in the medial plane in, of course, anatomical position. And we have another pair of terms that is inversion and eversion. So these refer to special movements of the foot and toe, again, related to, to your feet. Turning the foot inward is inversion. So you can remember it as well. So turning the foot inward toward the midline of the body is inversion and turning the foot away from the body is eversion. And you can see that these two are special form of 
what these two are also special form of a movement that we have already seen so they are slightly moving in the you can see if you if you extend this movement so they are making they are tending to make as a circles so you can think they are a special form of which movement that we just saw so in which plane do inversion and eversion occur so inversion and eversion occur in which plane so they occur in in the frontal plane so if you extend this in this movement further uh, hypothetically so some circle will be formed so you can visualize in which plane that will be formed so that is formed in frontal plane the plane that divides the body in two halves front end and final pair of uh, terms is final pair of movements uh, at joints is elevation and depression elevation and depression so these are specific to to your shoulder so elevation as the name implies to elevate to raise so that is elevation part of the body moves upward and in depression it moves downward so in the case of shoulder you can see that it is moving upward you are raising it so that is elevation and when you are moving it down that is depression so this is yet another pair of terms that uh, that is used to describe the movement of some joints elevation to raise and depression to to lower so in which plane is this pair of movements occurring elevation and depression they are occurring in which plane medial plane frontal plane or transverse plane so answer is frontal plane the plane that divides the body in front and back so we saw different joint movements in this segment flexion and extension flexion is decrease of angle between two bones two body parts extension is increase in an in that angle or moving the bone or body part back to its neutral position and hyperextension is the movement of that body part or joint beyond that neutral position add action moving towards the midline or to another body parts and abduction is moving away from the from the center line next we have rotation and circumduction rotation is the rotary movement around the axis of of a bone and circumduction is sort of free movement around any axis and you can make movement around sort of many axes and this is especially true for uh, for your ball and socket joints supination and pronation are specific to the movements of lower arm so when you move your lower arm in such a way that palm is up that is supination pronation is just opposite to that dorsiflexion and plantar flexions are related to the movement of your foot so when you move it upward so that angle of the foot and the lower leg is decreased that is dorsiflexion and when that angle is increased that is that is plantar flexion and inversion and eversion when you are when you move your foot toward the midline that is inversion and just the opposite is eversion and finally we saw elevation and depression raising a body part towards upper side is elevation towards toward lower side is is depression so i hope these movements are clear if you have any question you can ask during question answer session thank you very much